Hey, what's going on guys, Aaron here. So in today's video, I sat down with Daniel Marin, the founder and CEO of Nexus. What he and his team are doing inside of the crypto space with Nexus is really, really interesting. And I hope you enjoy the interview. All right, Daniel, welcome to the show. Hey. And uh, yeah, man, so for someone who's never heard of Nexus, how would you, I guess, briefly describe it and what it is that you're building, and also like why it matters right now. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Yeah, excited, uh, excited to be here. Uh, Nexus is a layer one blockchain, in particular, an exchange layer one. And what we're focused on is uh, this concept of verifiable finance. Um, given that we started as well um, working on zero knowledge proofs, and what we're excited about is the potential impact of cryptography in making finance programmable. Right. And you may wonder, why do we need more L1s or L2s or so on and so forth? Um, Nexus uh, started as a project from uh, Stanford University. I found another company when I was in my third year um, of college. And we have always had the vision that uh, there's a lot of innovation that can still be made to make a next generation layer one blockchain protocol, right? Um, part of the vision of the Nexus Layer 1 was actually to bring to market an accelerated version of the Ethereum 3.0 roadmap, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with, Aaron, right? But, you know, recently Vitalik and some other folks announced the enshrinement of certain knowledge proofs at the Layer 1 level. And also at Nexus, uh, we have key expertise in CK. We um, recognize uh, certain knowledge cryptography as a way to scale blockchains, not only L2s and L3s, but also L1s in a way proportional to compute power, right? And so our vision has always been there is an opportunity to build a blockchain who actually or which actually gets more powerful with the more compute provided to it with the more nodes connected to it. And you will know that this is fairly different from any other blockchain, right? With other blockchains, the more validators that it has, the slower it gets. But with zero knowledge cryptography, the more computational power you have, the more you can, uh, the more rapidly you can compute proofs or the more proofs that you can compute in a horizontal fashion, right? And so Nexus started from this vision of building this end game CK layer one blockchain that would have these very nice scalability properties and is evolving to include uh, this enshrined financial applications, which further bring more utility to the blockchain, right? And we recently announced the enshrinement and launch of a native perpetuals exchange uh, that we're pretty excited. This was, you know, a few weeks ago. And um, this will come soon after Mainnet, which is scheduled for Q1 of next year. So that's sort of like really briefly out there. But today in our community, we have over 3 million people, uh, 3 million users, right? Like uh, the active users that have participated and supplied computing power to the Nexus blockchain. And what these people are doing is they're running nodes of the Nexus layer one when, you know, in their computers, in their servers, so on and so forth. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. But yeah, you know, we think that the whole world is about to be tokenize. Uh, we believe in the hyper financialization of things. And uh, that's the direction where we're going as well. So the more people that join or essentially the more people that become nodes, it actually increases the speed. So can you talk a little bit more about that? And also maybe for people that don't know about zero knowledge, kind of what that is and what the purpose of that is and why you think it really matters right now in the space? Totally. Absolutely. Yes. So that's, that's the magical part. The more computing power connected to the Nexus blockchain, the higher throughput it has. And the reason is it uses this technology, zero knowledge proofs, which are computationally intensive, right? They use mathematics to generate a proof of correct computation. And this is the canonical scalability mechanism uh, on layer twos uh, and layer threes on Ethereum, right? You know, there's this whole CK scalability, scalability roadmap for the Ethereum protocol that's now also being included at the L1 level. Uh, but yeah, essentially, these are technologies that utilize mathematics to prove the correctness of computations, right? And um, we believe that you know, most blockchains today, Aaron, as you know, right, like their throughput, 
um, varies from like 100 TPS to, you know, a few thousands, maybe a hundred thousands. There's this new generation of high throughput blockchains such as Monad and Make ETH, right, that use different architectures to realize this high throughput. For example, Mega ETH has this um, super fast L2 sequencer. Uh, Monad has this high performant uh, consensus mechanism, right, BFT consensus. Um, our technique at Nexus is mathematics, right? Instead of relying on consensus or um, like um, fault proofs, we simply use computational power to generate this zero knowledge proofs. And the truth is that CK technology has a lot to uh, advance yet, but it has grown almost exponentially in performance over the last three years. And it will continue doing so. It's like Moore's law, right? Like every year it's getting at least 2x uh, faster or cheaper. And uh, as we build for the long term, we see a future where the, the Nexus blockchain not, not only gets to 100,000 TPS, but possibly you know a million or a billion TPS in aggregate, right? And it's all due to all the computing power that is computing these proofs. So it's a long-term scalability mechanism. So that leads me to my next question, which let's project two to three years down the road. What does a massive win look like for you, the community, and for Nexus, kind of based on everything you're talking about regarding TPS and the evolution of zero-knowledge proofs? Just kind of like, what does that look like and where do you see this company going? Yeah, totally. So as mentioned, we recently announced uh, the Nexus Perpetuals Exchange, right? And uh, we believe that a good blockchain protocol today needs to have a core central revenue generating entity that captures most of the liquidity, user base, and utility in an ecosystem. And so with Nexus, we combine an exchange with this high performance layer one with a new architecture uh, with the hope of building a new platform that um, enjoys a lot of liquidity, revenue, and capabilities for uh, for users, and, and many more things, right? We plan to enshrine other applications. And so answering your question, um, there are two areas, right? One is the revenue and um, applications and the exchange being um, essentially concentrating a large amount of liquidity leading to network effects at the heart of the layer one, right? Which is very important from a business perspective uh, for applications, for users to find that liquidity and grow their own businesses, right? And the other part is the infrastructure that ties back to the compute network that we were just discussing, right? The goal for the compute network, which is part of the infrastructure of the layer one, is to simply scale and scale and scale and scale its capabilities in terms of throughput, right? And so over the past uh, year and many of our uh, test nets, right, uh, the throughput capacity of the blockchain has in fact been increasing and that of the network and so on and so forth. There's still a long way to go for um, the capacity to match uh, like the throughput of a um, blockchain such as Hyperliquid. And so our approach is to uh, build those two in parallel, right? To have an, a blockchain with a particular architecture that combines this special purpose financial technology like the order book and the exchange, while the network continues growing and approaches uh, what is called real-time proving, right? Which is the ability to prove blocks in real time. This was a big goal for Ethereum. I don't know if you remember, right? There was a, a good amount of uh, noise when Ethereum was trying to uh, work with CK teams that would prove Ethereum blocks in real time. This is natively enshrined on the Nexus layer one, right? So we don't need to depend on third parties to prove Nexus blocks. Rather, that is embedded within the blockchain's architecture itself. It is also true, right, that for a blockchain to win, uh, technology is not everything, right? Uh, or like throughput is not everything. We believe that uh, one of the most important things um, uh, and I just mentioned this earlier, right, is the ability for a blockchain to natively capture value, right, like value accrual, uh, liquidity, capital, TVL, right? And that is where the exchange that uh, we recently announced and will be a really big part of the protocol is coming, as well as future protocol developments that we have not announced, but no, we'll announce, uh, you know, early next year as well, that further contribute to the hyper-financialization 
of everything. And, you know, we're really bullish on the future of um, tokenization of any asset in general. We believe that any market, that everything can become a market, right? That everything can be tokenizable. And uh, that's where the industry is going and where the opportunity lies. It really seems like you're tackling a lot of different things, right? This is, this is you know, there's a lot of, no pun intended, but a lot of nodes, you know, happening at the same time here, like mental nodes in terms of like, you know, get, you know, everything you talked about, the perpetuals, the blockchain, the ZK, the, you know, there's a lot happening. How did you create this idea for this? Because it is pretty complex, you know, like what, kind of like more about your personal life and how your brain's able to kind of think about stuff in this kind of large way, because uh, mine <laughs> surely isn't, you know, what made you ready for this endeavor? And, and, you know, just talk about kind of maybe a little bit about your background as well. If you don't totally, mind. totally. Yeah. First of all, I would say complexity is not uh, generally something to, to, for a project to be proud about, right? One is to think in simple terms. And um, generally we think about Nexus layer one as a single unified system. Right, you know the CK component, the scalability, the exchange. That is all one blockchain, right? an exchange layer one, attempting to provide maximum throughput, maximum liquidity to users. If you think about uh, Hyperliquid, right, or Ethereum, they're they're pretty complex systems, right? Like Hyperliquid has Hyper EVM, Hyper Core, which has various types of coprocessors. It has a native Byzantine fault tolerant new consensus mechanism. And a lot of cool things, right? All, all respect to that team. But generally, to push the boundary to the next level, you do need to combine a few things into one entity, right? And so answering your question, right, like how, you know, how does one um, uh, end up building, you know, such an architecture, so on and so forth. And next is um, we've always had the dream and vision of building uh, what you may consider the ultimate uh, verifiable world computer, right? That is what Ethereum is, right? A verifiable wor world computer. Uh, we think that there's a lot of opportunity that is not being addressed by Ethereum, right? For example, developers on Ethereum cannot gain access to high-performance order book functionality, right? That would allow them to build their own high-performance uh, decentralized exchange, whether a spot or perps. Well, to build a layer one that provides this natively to developers, you need to innovate and include this capabilities within the blockchain itself, right? But in order to support higher throughput and so on and so forth, you also need to innovate to reduce latency, to either fully prove the execution or you know come up with a better consensus mechanism. And so um, our origins, answering your question, Aaron, um, Sam back from, from, from Stanford, right? I, uh, before go, uh, attending Stanford, I, uh, studied, uh, mathematics and theoretical physics. Um, I participated, um, twice at the International Physics Olympiad. Uh, some other people in the blockchain space did that as well. And, uh, ended up working at the cryptography department at Stanford and, um, was one of the core innovations happening in 2023 is the rise of this new form of computation, general purpose, verifiable computation, right? Which is different from intelligent computation, like AI. Um, verifiable computing is based on sure knowledge cryptography. And so um, it's, it's a pretty big deal, right? To say, hey, there's a new form of computation being made available to the world right? Through mathematics. And so we, we, and not only us, right, like Ethereum as well and some other projects, have seen the future that um, there is an opportunity to build a maximally programmable, expressible, um, verifiable world computer, right? Essentially a blockchain. And um, we think it can be achieved. And we think not only that it can be achieved, we think that it will be achieved, Right? No, regardless of whether we exist or not. And there's multiple teams working on that, right? The Kuiper Liquid's building their best blockchain. Ethereum is trying to build their best blockchain. Donut's trying to build their best blockchain. We're also trying to build our best blockchain. And we're opinionated about what we think is the most important for users. And uh, we want to see that being brought to life. All right. So last question for me, uh, 2026, obviously coming around the corner very quickly. Um, where do you think the entire crypto space is headed and where does Nexus really fit into that picture? Yes. Um, 
Well, we think that there is a lot of things happening right now, right? With the Genius and Clarity Acts, right? Stable coins are gaining adoption. Uh, you just mentioned real world assets and even the SEC commenting on the um, high potential of everything being tokenized on chain. And essentially Wall Street, right? Wall Street is merging with crypto. It's sort of like um, putting its fingers everywhere. And with that, what has um, taken over the crypto space and crypto Twitter, for example, is uh, this notion of protocol revenue, right? And sound business fundamentals, right? So when you evaluate a new blockchain or a new blockchain protocol, right? whether that's a layer two, a layer one, or an application in one of those blockchains, right? What people are interested in is what is or what are the value accrual mechanisms in these blockchains, right? People criticize some other blockchains because they say, hey, you know, this blockchain is generating zero revenue, right? It's generating just a few fees. Like why, what justifies their, their value, right, for example? And uh, the trend that has happened over the last uh, year or so is um, this return of fundamentals. For us at Nexus, we recognize this. We think that this is pretty important. We think that value accrual at the protocol level is very important. Um, this sometimes materializes in some ways in terms of treasury buybacks with revenue, right? Um, it, it also translates in greater business power. Uh, capital to use for further partnerships with which greater bring more value to, to the protocol and its users, right? And so one of the advantages uh, of us at Nexus, uh, as opposed to other teams, I would say is that, you know, we're a Silicon-based, Silicon Valley-based San Francisco startup, right? Um, Series A, so on and so forth. And our approach to building an optimal layer one is very practical, and uh, we are focused on ways to enshrine revenue engines natively in the layer one that may benefit the whole ecosystem, including the perpetual exchange. And so answering your question, I think that the, the direction where we're going towards as an industry is an industry where there is higher quality and greater maturity in the ways that people evaluate uh, blockchain ecosystems hopefully based on sound business fundamentals. And we certainly want to go in that direction and beyond. Yeah, that makes total sense. Not just buying into whoever has the best marketing team. No. Excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Daniel, it was wonderful chatting with you. I think what you're doing is, pretty, is incredible. Uh, you're smarter than me times 10. So uh, I, I will support you guys. And uh, if you ever want to jump back on the uh, my channel, I'm happy to have you. Thank you, Aaron. Really appreciate it. This was fun.